What's up guys? This is Stefan from Project Life Mastery coming to you guys from Kenya. We're here building a school with we.org for this awesome community here. They're welcoming us. Enjoy the vlog. from Nairobi to a place called Bogani. This is the plane that we flew, a small little plane, and this was our runway, basically the grass here. So it's not an official airport or anything, it's just literally here in the middle of nowhere. And they met us here and greeted us, and now we're off to uh, the camp or the cottage, I'm not quite sure, but uh, yeah. So far it's pretty cool being here, out in the wilderness, out in the middle of nowhere. So we just arrived here at our camp. This is the tent that we're gonna be staying in at the next few days. We'll give you guys a tour around, so follow us. Similar to our safaris in Tanzania. Welcome to our humble abode. Yeah. Ooh, this is really cool. That's why they made us cards. Yeah, do you wanna read what the card says? Do you want me to read yours? Sure. So we're here with we, so give us these bottles here, we.org. Dear Stefan, Jumbo, which means Hello, and Karibu Bogani, which means welcome. We are so excited that you have chosen to stay with us here in Bogani camp. As you in... <laughs> something on this transformative experience in the Masai As you embark? Mara. Yeah, embark. Oh, nice. There you go. Please... Maybe I should read it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where are we? Please. Please know that we are here for you throughout your visit. If there is anything that we can do to make your stay with us even more exceptional and memorable, do not hesitate to let us know. Anthony and the Bogani team. Oh, good job. Very I, cool. I can read, guys. Trust me. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay, so is here's our shower? bathroom. And these are the necklaces that the Maasai made. Very cool. So you have to brush your teeth with bottled water. You've got to be very safe when we're here. There's lights. Yeah. But there's no Wi-Fi. No Wi-Fi. So it's just us and the nature outdoors. Yeah. So right now, on the first day, we're visiting one of the schools. So right now I'm standing outside one of the old school houses. This is what their classroom would be like before we came in and built the new school houses for them. So come on in, I'll show you. Huge like bee flying around. Uh, but these are the walls that are made out of uh, mud and cow dung and, and sticks. But this is the classroom. So you can see it's pretty simple. They have their benches here. Um, here they have kind of like a chalkboard. But um, one of the challenges, these classrooms would be overcrowded. So you'd see tons of kids here. You know, they don't necessarily get the special attention that you might get in North America where you might live. And um, you know, it, it's not the most ideal learning environment. So now that you know what this looks like, we'll show you next what one of the, the new classrooms looks like. So I'm now standing outside the new schoolhouses, which you can see already the quality is far more superior than what you saw before. One thing that I love is that they have all these inspirational quotes everywhere. It says we are always learning. They have ones that I'll show you where it says you are unstoppable. So really great affirmations and the mindset, that's what I'm into, the mindset of learning and education and developing yourself is always incredibly important. So let me show you inside one of the new schoolhouses. Follow me. So as you can see here, this is a lot better quality than what you saw before. It's actually a building versus before it was just, you know, uh, mud walls and cow dung and sticks and, and all of that. So here you can see they've got a much nicer uh, chalkboard. They've got, again, inspirational quotes here. Um, the, the desks and everything are a lot better. The other desks that I showed you before, they have four or five kids. Here there might be two or three kids. This is a lot more sustainable for the weather, the flooding, because the flooding in the other one was a big, a big issue that a lot of kids had to deal with. And just the ratio of teacher to students is a lot better now too. So 
big difference. Um, they also train the teachers. There's just a lot more that they do here um, than, than I've been learning here being here, such as, you know, they actually incentivize the teachers to come and live here by giving them a free house and helping to train them so that they come here to educate the kids. So a lot of really cool things that they're doing here. And I'll show you more around. They've got quite a few of these schoolhouses now that they've built that I'll show you. And this is a community that they've already, um, you know, we.org has already um, built and everything. And they set it up over several years and then they remove themselves from it and they make sure that it's sustainable afterwards by the government and all of that. So here is the, the school, the school ground, I guess, all the different schoolhouses. You see here it says, I am unstoppable. I love that. That's embedded in through the mindset every single day. So with that mindset, you can set and achieve anything. One of the reasons that we're able to attract teachers is to have a higher quality of infrastructure, not just in the classrooms, but there's something else that we offer to teachers here that convince really great teachers to come here. Any idea what we offer to teachers here to convince, what would convince a great, yes? Childcare. Interesting you say that. We do actually offer, so uh, can we pause that one? Let me come back to that one, because it's a really interesting side story. Maybe like housing? Yes, great answer. So in order to entice teachers, how do you convince a teacher to move out to a rural area? You get a free house. So we have on site housing that's built for the teachers. One thing we quickly realize is that, again, education is more than a classroom. Like it's easy to pop up a classroom, but if you want to look at the quality of education, you want to look at things like housing and those type of enticements. So a big, a big challenge here is 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 the is frankly a you know the, the government doesn't often pay on time so you got to incentivize teachers um, and b there's a challenge here of uh, what are called ghost teachers in Kenya oh. so they are teachers on the payroll <coughs> that's the brothers uncles cousins best friends that just like never show and when they finally there's like once in a blue moon you're like what the heck so if you're gonna be here and you know class is starting the students are like Hello, <laughs> we're starting now. Please come to class. You know, it's, it's you really quickly have accountability very fast. So another cool thing that they do here is women empowerment, and so they empower and incentivize the moms. They call them the mamas, the moms of the kids, to bring their kids to school. And then they can actually go and make beads. They have a whole area where they, uh, the moms can go and make beads and sell them and make an extra stream of income. So they're trying to empower the women of these communities to not only bring their kids to school to get educated, but also for them to make their own income. And also, of course, educating the parents as well, because um, one of the challenges that they have is educating the parents on why they should bring their kids to school because a lot of kids would drop out of school because their parents would have them come and work on the farm and the fields with the cattle, whatever it might be, and they don't see the long-term purpose of getting an education and what that can do for them. So they empower the parents, you know, even changing the mindset of, um, you know, for example, a lot of the, the, the dads or the fathers, they didn't believe in educating their daughters because in some ways they thought, well, why would a man marry an educated daughter? Because if she's educated, then she's going to talk back or whatever it is. It's an interesting mindset that they had, but they actually have to educate them on this, on the, the benefits of education and what the opportunities that that can bring them in their life. So it's really cool of what they've discovered and what they're working on to help empower the communities, the families to, to actually educate their kids and to go on and have more successful lives. Right now we're here in Kenya in a community where we're visiting their school. Yeah. Say Jumbo. Jumbo. The kids of their school. You guys like your new school? Yes. Good. I like your school very much. Yeah. Very friendly, very social. What grade are you? All right, guys, right now I'm at one of the homes of one of the families here in the village. They invited us in to show us around and showed us how, how they live and also the impact that we.org has now made on, on how they live. So here you can see the traditional home that they live in. So as you can see, it's a really simple hut, uh, but this is the new house that they now built for them, which is a lot nicer, has a tin roof, uh, just much, much higher quality living environment. 
And one of the challenges that they had before was that um, they used to actually live with the animals. And one of the things that we has educated them on is that if you live with the animals, if the animals get certain diseases, then that can get passed on to the family. So they actually now built a separate hut for their chickens, for their roosters, uh, for a lot of their animals, they keep here separately. So they do that now. And then you can see some chickens and I guess a rooster and some hens. And if you come with me over here, one of the other challenges that they had too is actually when they would clean their clothes, they would have them on the ground to dry. And uh, we educated them that that would, you know, their clothes wouldn't be that clean, insects and bugs, all that would be on the clothes and that isn't very sanitary. So they taught them about having um, clo um, clothing lines here where they can now hang their clothes and dry them. And then also you can see here they have a shower. So this is where they bathe and shower as well because they'd be out getting dirty and sweaty quite a bit and weren't the most hygienic. So having the shower also is a big difference, but you know, these are basic things that you and I, if you're watching this, it's obvious for you, but you come here to a community, a village like this, and you see how they live compared to how we live. And it's really eye-opening and uh, gives your life a different pers perspective, but it's really profound and powerful when you can make that impact to help them understand and learn better ways of living. And also, of course, just make sure they have a better quality of life. And so that's what we're really trying to do here is to see how they've lived and just get that different perspective, but also help them to be able to upgrade their standard and quality of life. So very eye-opening being here, but that's how they live. And uh, we're trying to help them a lot even further to increase their li livelihood and their family and their health and all of that. So it's pretty cool being here. Okay, so right now I'm inside one of their houses. So as you can see, it's really small. It's pretty much a hut. Um, not much is here. You can see some chairs that they have. And they'll typically be three to five people, probably actually more than that living here. Um, here they have like their fireplace. And there's really not much else. I mean, they have some pots and really not much material possession. So big, you know, um, mind-opening experience seeing this compared to what you're going to see now with their new house. It's night and day difference. Okay, so I'm now in their new house. As you can see, it's a lot bigger. Uh, it's a lot more spacious for them. They actually have some furniture here, uh, table, they have pictures and the calendar. They even have like little Christmas decorations here too. They have a window, more ventilation and everything. It's a lot cooler in here. Um, this is their sleeping quarters here, which I'm not going to open up uh, for their privacy, but this is where they'd sleep. So as you can tell, it's probably maybe like five times bigger than what they had before. And then also the roof makes a big difference too, because now they don't have water that gets in during the rainy season. So yeah, huge difference between where they were to where they are now. And they still have a lot more, a lot more, a uh, lot more to go when it comes to the quality of their life too. Right now we're by the river where the mamas get the water a few times a day. Uh, this is water they used to drink it, they used to boil it and drink it. Uh, they actually don't do that anymore. They now get this water a few times a day for their cattle. But right now we're gonna fill up some jugs, put it on our backs and carry it back to their home, which is something that they do a few times a day. So it's not easy, it's a lot of hard work, but we're gonna get the experience of doing that. Hey guys, right now I'm here with Max and Lexi. They've always wanted to be on YouTube, so they've asked to be in the Project Life Master YouTube channel. Do you want to say hi? Hi. Do you want to share where, where are you guys from? Uh, we're from New York, and 
one thing I want to say is subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So subscribe to the channel. Uh, so what kind of what kind of YouTube videos or channels do you watch? I like to watch like nature videos. Nature videos. Yeah. You like you like being outdoors in nature. Yep. Yeah. How about you? I kind of like to watch videos where you try not to laugh. Right. Those are great <laughs> ones. Awesome. And um, what, what? Tell us about your experience here. You're from New York, but you're here now in Kenya. What? What inspired you guys to come here? Um, we weren't even thinking about it. Like our parents were planning it for a long time, and um, the main reason was for vacation, but also for we. That's awesome. And what do you guys think about being here now so far? It's pretty different. Yeah. What are some of the biggest differences that you noticed or that you pay attention to? Um, like houses and. Um, how people eat, like they can't really afford as much. Yeah, it makes you appreciate your life so much more, right? Back yeah. home in New York. But they're so happy. Yeah. And did you uh, play with the kids yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, did you play soccer with them? Yeah. Yeah, did you have fun? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Cool. So anything else you'd like to say to you two before you wrap up? Um, never, never say, like never complain about what you have because some people don't have it. Some people don't have what you have, so. That's Very wise. How about you, Lexi, anything? Uh, some people have some different languages and you can't really understand them. So maybe they, you can teach them a little bit of words that you know. Yeah. And they can teach you some words. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. We can all learn from each other. Awesome, high five. You guys are awesome. All right, thank you guys, and thank you guys for being on YouTube. Say bye. Bye. So right now we're at one of the schools, and we're helping them build it. We're building up a wall right here. This is actually a college that some buildings are already built. But this one is for medicine that we're building right now. So this is this is the job that they, they gave us to do. Take this. This is like I think dirt and cement, water. Like that. <laughs> That's how you build a wall. I'm here outside We College here in the Maasai Mara. This is the college that we're building. Literally right now, but over a thousand people that came here to welcome us. Incredible, the people here are so generous, so loving, so warm, so cheerful. Um, every time that you greet them like this, they it means a lot for them. They really show their appreciation and gratitude, and so they like to dance for you and sing and involve you. They take you by the hand. Uh, they just give so much love, so it warms my heart being here, and hopefully me sharing this with you guys can inspire you to make an impact and contribute in some meaningful way to maybe somewhere like this or maybe in your own community as well. But it's all about making an impact and making a difference. And uh, that's what my life's been about. So 
Uh, happy to share with you guys the experience, the impact that we're, bring, we're making here, and also bring a lot of awareness to some of the challenges that a lot of the people here in Kenya face, and the things that we can help them with, and the solutions that we can help them provide. Right now they're giving us a goat as a special gift. The biggest present that you can give us is a goat. Simply because a goat you can you can milk to get some milk, you can sell it to get some money, you can slaughter to get some meat, you can give a friend and it's a nice pet in the family. Oh, we love you guys. We had 300 people here from this school that I helped to fund one of the classrooms for. They all greeted us and they're doing a big celebration, which is really beautiful. And Asante Sana, you're all so beautiful. Thank you so much for your generosity. And I will continue to give love and support and help and, and more. This one is also, was also uh, occupying the two teachers. This was one teacher and this another teacher. Yes, yes. Uvi, after I saw Jambo, Jambo, Jambo. Good. Good. What's up guys, Tatiana and I are here right now in Kenya with we.org and we're here right now as you guys know volunteering to help build schools and supporting different schools that we help fund and we got an awesome invitation today to go and speak at one of the secondary schools to the grade 10, 11 class on business and marketing. So the first thing I'll say is that you will make mistakes. That's all part of life. You're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna fail, and that's the biggest thing that holds people back. But failure, the failure doesn't exist if you learn from it, you know? Every time you make a mistake, every time you fail, even if you lose time, if you lose money, as long as you learn from it, and you don't repeat those same mistakes, then that's what allows someone to succeed. They say that success is going from failure to failure to failure to failure without losing enthusiasm along the way. So you have to you know, not be afraid to, to give up and keep going with it. But 
Um, you know, for me, some of the challenges I face is, is, is finding the right people, right? Because at a certain point, you have to find and trust other people to help work for your company and give them responsibility and give them work and give them jobs to help you grow your business because there's only so much that you can do by yourself. And if you want to grow your business and reach more people, you have to find ways to, to find the right people and build build a team, build um, build a culture of people. And that, that's one thing that we has done. We, what they're doing here, Craig, he would never have been able to do it by himself, right? But he had to find the right people to grow. And that's why, you know, Craig and we are able to make such a great impact is because he's built this team and made, you know, all of this possible because of that. So that's one of the challenges that I face. But. And uh, as you guys know, our whole mission in life is to pay it forward, to help inspire other people and show them how to build an online business. And this is especially exciting because a lot of these kids don't know anything about the internet or an online business. I mean, a lot of these kids, they grew up in poverty. Um, it's, it's such a privilege for them and such an incredible opportunity for them to actually go to school, secondary school. And um, they're so enthusiastic and eager to learn. And um, we're going to share with them about an online business, which for them is going to blow their mind because um, I know actually probably for you or a lot of people that might watch this in North America or Europe, even for you, the concept of an online business might be life changing. You might not even never even known or that it even exists that you can make money online. And for them, um, this is something they know nothing about. I mean, they don't even know what Amazon is. They don't know what Facebook is, social media, none of that. They don't have email address or anything like that. And so really our goal is to um, show them and explain to them a different way of doing business that they've never heard before and explain to them this new opportunity that's coming for them. Um, in the next few years, because in the next few years, these kids are going to have access to the internet and computers. They actually do have like one or two computers in their school, but um, they've never really spent much time on it. So uh, for them, it's like a life changing, revolutionary concept. We're going to share that with them, also our stories and uh, how we built our businesses and hopefully inspire them and share with them some universal uh, principles that uh, will lead to success in business. How about you, Tat? Anything you want to share about what we're going to share today? I mean, we're just going to share with them what it is that we do. We're going to share with them what the possibilities are. We're going to explain to them, yeah, maybe you don't have access to this right now, but in the next five years, this will be mainstream here in Kenya. And so because we're telling you about this now, keep your ears open. We want to plant the seed. Um, and then you'll have that advantage knowing this ahead of time. So you can start working on these things uh, as soon as possible and really develop your computer skills because it really does come down to that. Even if they don't want to do business, even if they want to pursue other careers, uh, they're still going to need some good computer skills. Yeah. So if they want to be relevant or if they want to work abroad, um, so we want to really make sure that we emphasize that to them, how valuable um, these skills are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited for this opportunity. Um, we've spoken at many different places before. I've spoken at high schools before, but never before here in Kenya and to this group of kids. So um, sometimes you never know which student it can change someone's life. I know for me, when I was young, 16, 17 years old, some of these concepts changed my life in so many ways. And so um, I'm excited for the potential impact this can make. And we'll share with you guys some of the clips from what we share today. Yeah, you know, with any, anything that you want to achieve in your life, there's a price that you must pay. There's a sacrifice. And part of getting what you want is knowing what you might have to give up. So that might be giving up sleep. There's been many times for us, we don't sleep because we're so committed to our business, what our dream is, what our vision, vision is, that we're willing to sacrifice some of our health, some of our sleep, not forever, but just in the short term. You know, it's a temporary sacrifice. Or sometimes you sacrifice, you know, going to buy candy or, you know, even a meal. You know, it's like you can save an extra bit of money because you believe long term in what your vision is and what you want to accomplish. So a big part of it is being, way, being willing to delay or give up the short term the short-term gratification. I know sometimes for me, my friends, they wanted to have fun, they wanted to go out, they wanted to do this and that, and I had to say to them, I'm sorry, I can't go, I have to I have to stay home, I have to study, I have to stay home, I have to work, I have to stay home and, and work on my business or my dream, and I missed out a lot on the fun things I could have done or my friends that were just kind of living in the moment, but I believe long-term that it all be worth it and pay off, and so, even right now being in school, you know, working harder than other, you know, other people, you can't, 
be complacent at times and compare yourself to everyone else either. You have to try to have that higher standard and, 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 and believe in your future. And I think that's such an important thing because whatever you believe here, you can achieve. You know, every, everything that is here in your outside world already started first up here as a thought, an idea, something in here that you visualize and you saw it. And the more that you can visualize and you can see it, the more that becomes a reality for you. It gives you that confidence to pursue it. So, you know, those are things that can help because the mind is, the mind is what's going to take you to where you want to go. And you have to learn how to use your imagination, your creativity. Because your imagination is just a preview of your life's coming attractions. Albert Einstein said that imagination is more powerful than knowledge. Because knowledge is what is, imagination is what could be. So you have to always you know, use your imagination, whatever you want in your life. See it up here first, right? See it again and again. Sleep about it, dream about it, and you can bring that into your life.